Welcome to the second video of the fourth module. This video would tell you about what is operant conditioning and how does operant conditioning work through the methods of reinforcement and punishment and it would also provide you with certain implications of how this operant conditioning can be used in the real world setting. At the end of this video, you will be able to understand the difference between classical and operant conditioning, gain insight into the principles and elements of operant conditioning as proposed by Skinner, realize the implications of reinforcement and punishment approach of operant conditioning towards early learning. Classical conditioning that was explained to you in the previous video describes an organism's response to the environment but it does not provide you a clue on how the response in turn gets influenced by the environment. This is where another major form of learning theory has come into existence. This particular theory on operant conditioning lays emphasis on the organism's activity in the environment. The table that has been projected to you now gives you a clear distinction between the classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Classical conditioning explains involuntary response, whereas operant conditioning would explain voluntary behaviors. Classical conditioning is a passive way of learning, whereas operant is an active way of learning. For example, the smell of a food triggering salivation is classical conditioning, whereas voluntarily studying hard to get good marks is an operant conditioning. An American psychologist B.F. Skinner developed the concept of operant conditioning and it is also otherwise called instrumental conditioning. Operant conditioning as classical conditioning is also a form of associative learning wherein the outcome of behavior predicts the likelihood of the occurrence of that behavior. The term operant refers to the behavior that is emitted by an organism. This behavior operates on the environment and the environment in turn operates on the behavior. Operant conditioning is just an expansion of Throndic's law of effect. So before venturing into the concept of operant conditioning, let us gain some insight into what is Throndic's law of effect. An American psychologist Edward Lee used a puzzle box to study how cats learn. A hungry cat was placed inside the box and a piece of fish outside the box. To escape from the puzzle box and get the fish to satisfy its hunger, the latch inside the box has to be released by the cat. Throndic absorbed some ineffective responses by the cat. After some time, the cat accidentally placed its foot on the treadle that released the latch. Finally, the cat could come out and get the fish. After returning to the box, the cat continues with the same sort of random movements until it stepped on the treadle. Now, after certain succeeding trials, the cat's random movement declined and could finally come out of the box in the first attempt itself. The behavior had so become voluntary as it is influenced by a reinforcer that is fish. Hence, Throndic's law of effect states that behaviors followed by positive outcomes are strengthened whereas behaviors followed by negative outcomes are weakened depending upon the consequences of the organism's actions. In other words, appropriate stimulus response connections that is SR connections strengthen and an inappropriate connection weakens the behavior. Now let us go on to the Skinner's approach to operant conditioning. Skinner's approach was experimental. He operated the consequences of organism's behavior to find out the effect that they had on successive behavior. For his experiment, Skinner invented an apparatus called operant chamber that allowed him to manipulate the consequences of the behavior of the rat. This chamber was set in such a way that a press on the lever by the rat would be followed by delivery of a foot pellet. As the hungry rat started exploring the box, it accidentally touches the lever and a foot pellet was dispersed. Now understanding that the consequence was positive, the rat after certain trials deliberately touches the lever. 
Hope the Operan Chamber has made you understand that the rat is rewarded, in other words, reinforced by the foot pellet and thus the desired outcome is obtained. Now let us have an insight into the elements of operant conditioning. The two major elements of operant conditioning are reinforcement and punishment. Now let us see what is reinforcement. An example for reinforcement is illustrated to you. Watch it. A child reads a book because she receives praise from a mother for reading, which is found to be a positive reinforcement. Now again, watch the illustration. The same child is reading book because it gives her a sense of relaxation after doing a long tedious homework which is a negative reinforcement. But do understand that in both the cases the end result is a higher incidence of book reading. Hence positive reinforcement is a process wherein the frequency of behavior increases as it is followed by a rewarding stimulus. Whereas negative reinforcement is the process wherein the frequency of behavior increases as it is followed by the removal of an aversive stimulus. Now on to punishment. I am 100% sure that all of us hate punishments. But punishments are always found to be one of the influential regulator of behavior. Suppose you have a very bad allergic reaction after taking a medicine for your headache. The next time you get a headache, you will not take the medicine and you feel that you can manage with the headache rather than having such an allergic reaction, isn't it? Again as reinforcement, punishment is also of two types which we call it as positive punishment and negative punishment. Let us look into those things with proper illustration. Just imagine a situation where you don't clean up your room when your parents ask you to. I am sure your mother will yell at you. What do you do now? You clean up the room. And even after you try to keep your room clean for one reason, to avoid being scolded. Hence a process by which the occurrence of behavior, namely not cleaning your room, decreases when followed by an unpleasant stimulus, yelling by mother is referred to as positive punishment. Suppose in the same situation of not keeping your room clean, your mother, instead of yelling at you, calmly tells you that you will not be allowed to go and play with your friends for two days. What will be your behavior? Don't you go clean the room? Therefore, the process by which the occurrence of behavior decreases when a positive stimulus of going and playing with friends is removed. I hope you would have understood about the concept of reinforcement and punishment with positive and negative note. But how do you apply operant conditioning to real life setting? The major applications of operant conditioning in our daily lives are the first one is behavior modification. Researchers of behavior modification consider that many emotional and behavioral problems are caused by inadequate, inappropriate responses and consequences. Operant conditioning gains significance by inducing a change towards the desired behavior with adequate responses and consequences. The second important area is education. Operant conditioning can be applied in classrooms to improve the level of learning among children in two ways. One is the Pramac principle and the second one is by shaping. Pramac principle is something that is named after a psychologist David Pramac. The Pramac principle states that a high probability activity or more preferred activity can be used to reinforce a low probability activity or less preferred activity. For example, a teacher might say, if you all get your homework done by this Friday, you will be taken on a field trip on Saturday is the Primac principle. Second one is shaping. Shaping is a process of rewarding approximations of the desired behavior. When behavior takes time to occur, the learning process in operant conditioning can be shortened by rewarding an approximation of the desired behavior. For example, a teacher has got a student who has never completed more than 50% of her homework. The teacher could set the target behavior at 100% but reward her for successive approximations to the target, maybe for 70 first and then 80% and then 90% and finally 100%. So 
this video on operant conditioning and its implication would have given you a glimpse of how a person, how a child in particular learns by means of reinforcement and punishment both in the positive and the negative mode and how it can be applied to the real classroom setting or real world setting. Hope to meet you in the third video of this module. Bye.